the intravenous infusion Tysabri or the pill Gelenia, which MS drug is more effective? Neurologists have long believed that Tysabri is likely more effective based on indirect comparisons in different clinical trials, but today I'm going to show the results of the REVEAL study, which is an actual randomized head-to-head -head trial of Tysabri versus Gelenia in relapsing MS, and I'll give a brief introduction on the drugs, show the results of the clinical trial, and the side effects. Let's have some fun. So just to give a little bit of a background on the drugs, Tysabri is an intravenous medication given in an infusion center generally once every four weeks. And it works by preventing the lymphocytes, a subclass of white blood cells, from entering the central nervous system. So it doesn't deplete the immune system, but prevents it from invading the brain, spinal cord, and optic nerves, hopefully to prevent attacks and new lesions associated with multiple sclerosis. The most feared side effect of Tysabri is that in very rare cases it can cause reactivation of a certain virus called the JC virus which can cause a very rare but serious brain infection known as PML. And if you want to learn more about Tysabri I have a separate video on this topic. Gelenia, on the other hand, is a pill for MS usually given once daily, and it works by blocking the same lymphocytes from exiting the lymph nodes and indirectly preventing them from invading the central nervous system. And it can cause various side effects, including a temporary slowing of the heart rate and requires monitoring for the first dose, and it can also weaken the immune system and cause certain infections such as shingles and even very rare cases of PML, though much more rare than with with Tysabri. It can also sometimes cause breathing problems and a vision problem called macular edema. So the REVEAL trial had 111 participants, 56 got Tysabri and 55 received Gelenia. And they wanted to do a much larger trial, but they had very poor recruitment and so they had to stop it early. And all of these people had relapsing remitting MS. And it was a 52 week or one year trial at 43 sites in 9 different countries and 69% of the participants were female, which sort of reflects the overall demographics of multiple sclerosis. The average age was 36 and the average EDSS, which is a measure of disability in MS used in clinical trials, was 2.5, which is relatively low disability and I have a separate video on EDSS if you want to take a look. This was a randomized trial but it was not blinded. The patients knew what they were receiving and they did this really for convenience because it would take a lot of time and energy for someone taking Gelenia to show up for a fake infusion of saline. However, the sponsor of the trial, Biogen, the drug company Biogen, was blinded, and Biogen makes Tysabri, which is a potential conflict of interest, but they blinded them so they could not at least directly interfere with the results. Now, one thing the researchers looked at was new gadolinium enhancing or active lesions on MRI, and these are the lesions on the MRI scan that light up when they inject you with a contrast dye when you get your MRI, and in green, you're looking at fingolimod or gelenia, and and in blue, you're looking at natalizumab or Tysabri, and you can see that Tysabri was much more effective at preventing new enhancing lesions. So after 24 weeks, on average with Gelenia, you had 2.6 new lesions versus only 0.72 with Tysabri. Now, both of these drugs take some time to become more effective, which is why most of the new lesions developed right away after four weeks, 1.69 on average with Gelenia versus 0.62 with Tysabri. Now, with Tysabri, Sabri, almost all of the new lesions occurred immediately, and between 4 and 24 weeks, there were only 0.1 new active lesions on average, whereas with Gelenia, certainly most of the lesions developed right away, but there were some new lesions that trickled in slowly over the next 20 weeks, and there's a difference between 4 weeks and 24 weeks of about one new lesion on average. And the next thing they looked at was clinical relapses. And what you're looking at here is the cumulative probability of relapses over time. So you start with zero relapses and it goes up slowly. And in green, you're looking at Gelenia. And in blue, again, you're looking at Tysabri. So the Tysabri group did extremely well with only 1.9% having any new relapses versus 22.3% with Gelenia, a 92% difference between the two groups. So Tysabri was much more effective 
perspective. Another way to look at it is the annualized relapse rate or the average number of relapses per year. Here you can see the baseline year and the year prior to the study starting and both groups had on average about two relapses per year which is actually quite high compared to a lot of other clinical trials. So this was a group of people with relatively active disease but in the year on the study the Gelenia group had 0.2 relapses per year or in other words one relapse every five years versus only 0.02 relapses per year or one relapse on average every 50 years in the Tysabri group. A 90% difference between the two groups. So again, Tysabri was much, much more effective. And I want to briefly mention the side effects. There were some minor side effects that weren't too significant, but just to talk about a few serious adverse events. With Jelenia, there was one case of something called second degree atrioventricular block. This is a problem with communication between the top two chambers of the heart the atria and the bottom two chambers, the ventricles. And this is a known side effect of Gelenia. Often it occurs with the very first dose and then you would just stop the medication and not continue it. There are actually two types of second degree AV block. One is not serious called Wenka block and another is quite serious. And they don't say what it was and they don't say if it was temporary or not in the article. But I would presume it was likely a temporary problem. I actually had one patient who developed temporary atrial fibrillation when taking this drug and it went away after we stopped the medication. It wasn't a big deal. There was also one case of elevated liver enzymes in someone taking the drug. I don't know if it was severe or not. With Tysabri, there was only one serious side effect, which was an infusion reaction with the rash. I don't know how serious it was. Tysabri can, in rare cases, cause serious infusion reactions, even anaphylaxis. But anyways, the summary of the study is that Tysabri is much more effective than Gelenia, perhaps even more effective than we believed based on other clinical trials. Now, there are some biases here with the patients not being blinded and with Biogen, who obviously has a conflict of interest, paying for the studies. I'd be really interested in knowing your own experiences with these drugs. Have you taken Tysabri or Gelenia? How were your results and what side effects did you have? And do you have any other suggestions for future videos?